Lord, this morning. You are I am. You are God. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We praise you, Lord. God, fill the homes of the Lord that will join in worship this morning, oh God. You are present, God. You are present, God. Wherever we are, God, you are God. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. No matter where we are this morning. God, what people are going through this morning, you are God. We thank you that you reign, that you rule this morning, God. You are healer. You are deliverer. You are savior this morning. You are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God reigns. Hallelujah.
praise to our God this morning. Yes, yes. Let 
this king that we sing about this morning be lifted up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Eternal God, we thank you, Heavenly Father God. We thank you, God, for the blessings of God that you already bestowed upon us in this building this morning, Heavenly Father God. We thank you, God, because your presence, oh God, is rich and full in this place this morning, Heavenly Father. We ask, Almighty God, that you continue to bless this service, of oh God. Bless the songs of Zion, Heavenly Father. Bless the, the preaching of the word, oh Heavenly Father. Give us a, a mighty a blessing, oh God, as we sit under the tent of your word this morning, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
take joy, my King, in what you hear. Take joy in what you hear, my king. And what you're hearing is the blessings of Antioch Baptist Church Music Ministry, an awesome, awesome entity, an awesome, awesome branch of this, of this church. Thank you. Good morning and hello. Welcome to Antioch Baptist Church and Antioch Baptist Church Live. On behalf of Pastor Hobbs, the Antioch Baptist Church officers, its ministries and congregation, we'd like to welcome you to our service and thank you for your attendance. If there's any first time visitors or returning guests that are present with us or out in the audience, please stand so we can recognize you and give you some love. Good morning. Well, what's more? Well, thank you. Well, thank you, and welcome for your attendance. Excuse me, and, and we thank you for your attendance. Uh, is there anybody out there that has celebrated a birthday, an anniversary, or had anything special happen to them? We'd like to congratulate and, and celebrate with you. Happy birthday. Oh, anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> at this time, ladies and gentlemen, if there's anybody that's interested in what goes on here at Antioch, you can check us out on any one of our social media platforms at Antioch Baptist Church Springfield, or you can look us up at Antioch640.org on the internet. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Pastor Hobbs, we thank you for your attendance. We hope you enjoy the service. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today I'll be speaking from the New King James Version, uh, scriptures from Luke chapter 15, 1 through 5. Everybody stand at this time for the reading of the word. If we have it. And it reads, Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I will tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in the heaven over one sinner who repents 
and over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. May blessings be the reading on the word. bring our voices together, singing our hymn of praise this morning. Blessed quietness found on page 122. We'll be singing the first and second and the last verses, okay? Come on, joys are flowing. Joys are flowing. Has come. He abides with us forever. Makes a trusting Come on, blessed quietness.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm just going to ask you saints to pray with me as we pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you, Father. Thanking you, Father, for this beautiful day, Father. Not because it's not raining or snowing, Father, but it's a beautiful day that we can just come together, our spirits join together, and lift up praises to your name. It's wonderful, Father, that, that we can lift up the name of Jesus and our Lord and Savior, Father, because there are places, Father, and still in this world today where they do not want to hear the name of Jesus or give him praise to you, Father. But we, we're so thankful, Father, that in today's age, they can't put up a wall around it, Father, that your word will go forth over the airways and byways, Father. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Once upon a time, we didn't think that we would see what was happening in Jerusalem around the world. But today, Father, with the technology we have, we can see in the hour when something happens in any part of this world. So we thank you, Father, that the walls cannot be put up to keep you out, Father. The walls cannot keep your word from going forth, Father. And we, Father, we join together our spirits, Father, our faith, lifting up your name, Father. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we would grow in strength, Father. We would grow in strength and our tongues would not be bound, Father, to professing your goodness in our lives, Father. Because we know, dear Father, as we went through the past week, Father, that it was you that watched over us as we traveled upon the highways, Father, on the trains, Father. We know that it was you, Father, that was in the courtrooms, Father, watching over and being our counselors, Father. We know, dear Father, that it was you that was in the hospitals, in the doctor's office, Father, guiding the, the, the physicians, Father, for our well-being, Father. We know it was for you, Father, to have watched over us while we slept. And we know for sure, Father, that we would not be standing here this morning, Father, if it was not you that was ordering and guiding our steps. So we do thank you, Father. We do thank you, Father, for all that you do in our lives. Ah, Father, you're so awesome, Father. And we do come before you, Father, laying our supplications for you, before you, Father. We, we, we come laying our, our, our sick and shut in, Father. Those that are not able to join us here. And, and we know, Father, there are those that are joining us online, but those that are in the hospitals and, and, and nursing homes that are not able to consciously join in to this prayer, we're praying for them, Father. We're lifting them up for you because we know that some of your, your, your saints that have been on the battlefield soldiering for you, Father, may be laid up right now, Father, and not able to, to, to profess their, their, their feelings to you, Father. So, Father, we pray for them. We pray for them, we lift you up, and we ask the Heavenly Father that your spirit touch them, Father. Touch and comfort them, Father. Strengthen them, Father. And we know, dear Heavenly Father, there are some of our, 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 our soldiers, Father, that have lost loved ones, Father, that are just not at home anymore, Father, and they have that empty spot in their heart, Father. But we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would fill that empty spot, Father. We pray to Heavenly Father that you would give them the joy that they had a special time in their lives, Father. And not to forget the beautiful time that you allowed them to have, Father. We thank you to Heavenly Father because it is better to have had them in our lives than not at all, Father. So we thank you for them, Father. And we pray to Heavenly Father as we go forth, Father, that your light would shine through us, Father. That the world will see your face through us, Father. And may we be conscious, Father, each and every day, Father, that we are your representatives, Father. And we're not afraid to stand there and say, yes, I praise the Lord. I lift up and follow my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you, Father. Give us all that boldness, Father, to loosen our tongues, Father. And may, and may we not forget, Father, that we should share our testimonies with one another, Father to let them know that, yes, Father, you're still moving today as you were yesterday, Father. We thank you. We thank you. And as we go into this service here today, Father, we pray to Heavenly Father that your Holy Spirit 
touch each and every one of us, Father. May your spirit manifest itself to us today, Father. Because we know, the Heavenly Father, we're not here by accident, Father. So as we join our, our faiths, those little mustard seeds of faith are all coming together, Father. We know that there's power in it, Father. And as we continue on through this service, we will praise you, Father. We will lift our voices, Father, and give you the thanks, Father. So we ask the Heavenly Father, from the pulpit to the door and back again, have your way in this service today, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. your name or oh, how you walk with me oh how you walk with me or oh, how you talk with me God oh how you talk with me God oh how you tell me the Lord that I am your own oh, how you tell me God that I am your own I am your own standing in a crowd of a million people. He can call me out. He sees me. He you sees you, Lord. He sees your need this morning. No matter how many people around, God sees you. You know my name. He calls you by your name. Knows all about you this morning. Knows you all about know you. My name. God, you know my name. Yes, you do, Lord. You know my name every single one of your needs you know God you know my name you know my name you know my name
you are the God that knows. You are the God that knows us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the oceans rise, God, faith in you will hold us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know my name. How many are glad this morning that God knows your name? I got news for you. He doesn't just know your name. <laughs> he knows your circumstance. He knows your condition. He knows your hearts. He knows your rising, and he knows your setting down of the sun. He knows all about you so much so that the Bible says he knows every hair on your head. Now, I don't have many, but you know, a little bit I have. God knows so much about us more than we even know about ourselves. And the best part is that he cares about us. He's taking care of us, hallelujah, for all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and call to, ah, do I have a saint out here that loves the Lord this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Yes. We are truly grateful this morning. How many, yes, give God a praise, come on. He's worthy. Yes, you can, can never be afraid to give God the praise this morning. And I want to praise him. I, I, uh, I'm taking this Sunday, and I missed making an announcement last Sunday, so I'm incorporating. But I want to take some time to celebrate some of our folks doing stuff that sometimes we don't even hear about. And I, and I was minding my own business, going through my emails, and this came through through our own Donna, uh, Sister Donna Clayton. So uh, I'm going to read her email. I, just, I don't even know if that's legal, but I'm going to read it anyway. And so it says, what a blessing it was to participate in the National Night Out at Jesse Allen Park this past week. I think that was last week, right? We engaged with a beautiful group of residents, community leaders, and even a few politicians. We shared information on our program and was very well received. We also had fun with the kids, giving out colorful water bottles, homework notepads, and candy bags, of which y'all didn't bring me any back, but that's fine. Um, however, the biggest blessing of all was being led to a person in need. God did it. 
we learned of an 81-year-old gentleman whose refrigerator had just failed and he had no resources for replacing it. God's anointing allowed us to secure a new refrigerator for this gentleman, and it was delivered to him. On, can we give God a praise? Amen. And she wants to thank uh, Renee Williams for inviting us to participate in a wonderful event. Special thanks goes to Betty Walker, Marcellus Green, and Levon Pack for turning out to help with the event. Now, let's move on to the next. This is our own Antioch CDC. Come on, let's give God a praise. And see, the work we're doing uh, doesn't go for nothing. God knows your heart. He knows what you're doing. And it's wonderful that, you know, we can't just talk about it, but we can, sometimes we just got to be about it. Amen? Amen? We are so grateful for them, and we thank God for them. Then I was still minding my business, and I was on the, let me see here. I was reading the newspaper. Let me see if I could find this here. And this, I was reading, um, what is this, Tap Into Springfield, and I came across an article Where's my email? That wasn't email. Wait a minute. Where was that at? That's on my, I can't find this stuff. Here it goes. So I came there, and I was just reading. I'll read this every day. It's a you know, digital uh, newsletter trying to find out what's happening in Springfield. You know, I want to be, be on top of stuff. Then it said 24 students who were residents of Springfield were named to the spring 2022 dean's list at Kane University. I said, that's cute. That's nice. And to qualify for the dean's list, you've got to have a GPA of at least 3.45 or higher. All right, yeah, whatever. And, they, and, and, so, and so I had to, I was going on a list. Second person, I saw Samantha Blackman. <laughs> and now she's a junior majoring in science and technology. Um, com, com, how do you say that? Compu computational science and engineering. And I was just somewhat impressed because, you know, she's on the dean's list. I was on the dean's list, too, when I was in school. But I, I think mine was probationary. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's the same kind of list. <laughs> but he knew my name. <laughs> he knew my name. But then I went on to read something else. Springfield resident inducted into the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi. Now, I couldn't even go past it when I was in school. I, I said, Phi Kappa Phi, that's for like little smart people, you know, the, you know, the Gary, the ones we used to beat up, take their money and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do that no more, I guess. Uh, they got rid of bullying, so I don't know why. And, and, but I found out here, and I started reading up, or left the paper, but our own Samantha is an um, honorary society of Phi Kappa Phi member, which means, listen, <laughs> if, make sure I'm saying it right, you only, only 10% of all the students, I'm not talking about just here, I'm talking about the United States, all the students get a part of that, and wait a minute, she's a junior, so a junior's only what? It's like something, huh, what is it? Seven, only 7% 7 of juniors nationwide make this. Can you give God a praise for <laughs> He sent us a, a gem. <laughs> amen, amen. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And we certainly, we certainly honor you for your academic prowess and, and all that. I'm just so happy to know somebody in that. I <laughs> I don't think I ever met anybody, <laughs> and they certainly didn't like me if they did meet me. So God bless you. Uh, let us, choir, come on, let's just have church, keep on having church. But we thank everyone who works. I know all y'all are working diligently, so don't, don't, you know, we're just pinpointing those who came out recently. Your turn is coming. Keep on working for the Lord, and we'll have you on the next list. God bless you this morning.
back to God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of glory. Lord of glory. God, oh, we worship you. Come on, sing it along with us this morning. This corporate worship. God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of glory. Oh, we worship I even uh, go any further, I, I want to make a point so that the kind of prepared sermon will make sense. Is that, you, you understand what I'm saying? So I got to give some context or else we'll all be lost. And, and, and so I'm trying to figure out a way to can do it as concise and as quickly as possible so we're not here all afternoon or well, I'm not here afternoon because y'all be going out with the finger <laughs> one at a time <laughs> and, and leaving me by myself. And so I want us to just imagine for a second and, and, and just think this through. Uh, a, a couple that has a child, two hateful people that have a child, what do you think the likelihood of that baby coming out not hating? It's very unlike, isn't it? The chances are, if you have two people who are hateful, they teach hate, they live hate, then the chances are that baby is going to be hateful, just like the parents. Now, conversely, if you have two loving parents and, and they teach love and they teach tolerance and they teach all these wonderful things, chances are that child will be loving. There's other influences, but more than likely, that child will come up with those same attributes as the parent had. Oh, now, if then that's true, if we have our church institutions, uh huh, if we have uh, uh, these 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 religious institutions we have all around, and we teach tolerance, and we teach love, and we teach uh, going out and helping folk and loving folk, 
chances are we'll have a church that goes out and does all those things. But conversely, if we teach separation and we teach intolerance, we teach that, that we, you know, our, our theology and we're arguing over that, chances are that that institution will have the same thing. That makes sense, right? Uh, Y'all don't want to get with that, huh? You know, so you, why'd you bring church into this? <laughs> but it is true that that that, that is a very, part, a very important part of our fellowship together. And what happens is, what is it said, birds of a feather they flock together. What happens if we're not careful is that we start affirming each other even if it's wrong. We affirm each other in the right, we affirm each other in the wrong, and we become so uh, entrenched in us-ism. I know that's not a word, but we, we get so entrenched in that that we can't move from there to see the very value of fellowship. For Jesus declared that uh, and said, I'm going to pray that you are one. Of all the things Jesus prayed about before he died, isn't it interesting that he said, i got to pray. <laughs> this is not just a commandment I can give. This is not just a suggestion. i got to pray that you all be one, even as the Father and I are one. And I always looked at this and said, Jesus, you, he was very serious about it. So much so, I said, before I go to the cross, I can't even go to the cross with this on my mind. I got to pray because I know that the difficulty of your coming together. And so all week long, I was looking at different things, studying different things, like how can we bring all this together? How can the church of Jesus Christ universal, not just here in Antioch, but everywhere come together? What are the dividing things? And I start thinking of the different theologies and the different doctrines and the different things we got all over. And I'm like, it's, it seems impossible. Reverend Reggie, it seems impossible, don't it? It seems really, but, but if Jesus said it's possible... It's got to be possible. And I'm trying to think, and I listen to some of my favorite preachers. I listen to stuff, and they were, it's, it's so funny. When you get on something, you'll see it all the time, right? They were, they were debating that same thing, how we can do it. And not that I'm, I'm the least of everybody, but I sat there, and an epiphany hit me. I said, wait a minute. Jesus' prayer was answered. The problem is not that we're not together. The problem is our perception that we're not. And let me explain what I'm saying. I guarantee you that everybody in here has some differences of opinion on some scriptures, yet we don't fall out, do we? I bet you, listen, here's my mom coming in and my sister, and I know for a fact there's five of us. And each one of us, is, we have five siblings. You know, I have four siblings than me. That makes five. All of us love the Lord. But if you get us in the room, all of us love him differently. We have different opinions about all kind of stuff from baptism to, to salvation to all that. But you know what? When mama say it's time for dinner, everybody just come on and eat. We don't sit around and talk about, I can't talk to you because you don't believe in that. And I can, that you know why? Because that's my sister and that's my brother. And because they're my sister and my brother, I've already decided before the debate came that I'm going, at the end of any debate, I'm still going to love you. I've already decided before anything happened that it doesn't matter what go down, we still family and we still going to love each other. And I'm saying, oh my goodness, when I hit my spirit and said, we don't really have a problem with theology. We don't have a problem with doctrine. We have a problem with love. For if we would just say, I don't care what you believe, you're still my brother. I don't necessarily agree with that, but it doesn't matter. I still love you. For the Bible declared that it's by love. Well, by this shall all men know you're my disciples. Not by your doctrine, not by your teaching, not by your preaching, not by your shouting, not by your speaking in tongues, not by none of that. I will know that you're my disciples, what? By the love. Oh, somebody ought to say love this morning. Love that you have one to another. And as we show love, why right, everything else can be made up for. Love covers what? A multitude. Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? So now we're going to talk about this in the context of the scripture we have this morning. And, and thank you, uh, Deke, for reading that earlier. Uh, and I'm going to, to just try to cover it again if I could find it here somewhere. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, I'm all over the place this morning trying to, Samantha messed me up trying to find her stuff. I'm going to blame, you know, I'm going to blame her. <laughs> she said, again? Yeah, that's what I do. 
And here it is. So in today's scripture, come on. This technology works when it works. The Luke, the 15th chapter, that's where you are. And I have the new King James Version here. And it says, then all the tax collectors, hmm, and they considered tax collectors back then. They weren't good people like now. Well, they're not good now. We don't like IRS, do we? <laughs> but at least they're not criminals. <laughs> and these are all the criminals and the sinners drew near to Jesus to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes, in other words, the religious folk, the saved folk, the church folk said what? Uh, complained, saying, Wait, look at him. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Man, he hanging out with, in the hood eating with them instead of being with us. It's, it's the inference, right? If you think about it, what is he saying? He ain't mad that he's just with them, but he's not with us doing the way we think it should be done. That's what it's all about. So then Jesus, knowing that, he spoke a parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one with which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he has come home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Hallelujah. Than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word again? Now, this is the irony here. And the reason why I had that, you know, I had the context earlier so we can kind of understand where we're going. The irony for me this morning was, and it, and it also goes to show my age as well, that I, I chose as a subject home alone, which I thought was so clever and so wonderful, except I didn't realize that home alone was done like 30 years ago and don't half the people here didn't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I start saying, anybody remember that, uh, that movie home alone? Yeah, look, yeah, like, oh, if you wasn't born, look, if she wasn't even born yet. <laughs> and some of the babies, they wasn't even here 30 some years ago. And I'm saying, oh, this is so sad. <laughs> but I have it now. But then, it, that, watch this, watch how it makes sense. So, and, but let me tell you what Home Alone is, just in case you don't, those who didn't raise your hand. So it was really a, a cute little story. Uh, and, and, and my youngest son, I should have known, he was a baby then. He's 30 something years old now. And so he used to know every line of that movie. Verse by verse, he used to sit there and say that every line, I, saw, I thought that was so amazing. And the story was about a young boy who accidentally got left home. His parents and everybody else's siblings went on vacation, left a little kid in the house. Some criminals came to take a still for the house, and somehow or other, he used his ingenuity, his little toys, whatever he had access to, and he protected it home until the parents famous finally came back like a week later and they were all scared what happened and that boy had tore them criminals up <laughs> them guys would never come back to the home again he had they was arrested everything and it was so amazing that somebody that age could take care of the house so well that's the whole story of it but and and and, and it's so funny to me because i'm bringing it up and it's lost on a generation that may not have seen that or understood and as a matter of fact some of the analogies are lost because but well, they're saying, of course you could do that now. But at the time, we watching it, it seems so amazing. Now, of course, these kids with all the technology they have, all you had to do is, you know, and, and, and it becomes much easier. They don't get the point. Well, I'm saying all that to say, sometimes uh, when we're reading the word of God, we don't say it, but we don't get the point. We really don't. There are times we just, we, we, we think we get the point, and I'm going to be honest with you. For all the time I heard the scripture, I never got the point. Not really, because Jesus said, who of you who had 99 sheep and one was lost wouldn't leave the 99 and go for the one? I'm always thinking when I hear that, me? I go for that one if I got 99, because what happens to the 99 if I go for the one? That's the, anybody else? That's just me? I just, I, I didn't get it. I, said, I, I hear what Jesus is saying. And I know it was rhetorical at that moment. For the people he was talking to, they all understood. Oh, yeah, all of us would leave the 99 for the one. But because I'm not a shepherd, I don't know nothing about being a shepherd. I'm a thousand years away from that story. 
it doesn't really resonate with me like it did with them because I never watched a sheep in my life. I never planned on doing it. I don't do the sheep thing, but I, I'm, I'm just reading what happened, and I'm trying to get the point, but I don't get the point of leaving 99 sheep just to get one. That joker just lost. I'm sorry. He should have stayed with the crew. I can't jeopardize my whole flock for you. Or anybody, or anybody else got that? I mean, that's just what I got out of that. I'm sorry. That's how I'm reading it. And I'm, I'm Lord, I'm praying. And Lord, so you got to show me. Of course, you know, when you ask the Lord that, what's he going to do? He's going to show you. And most of the time, he's going to show you you. And that's the part. That's why you don't want to keep asking him. He said, oh, you want to see. And what was happening, he's showing me um, some of, uh, of the flaws in my theology. And some of the flaws in my thinking and some of the flaws in what's going on because I'm thinking that, that what we're doing and what I'm doing and this contribution that we're doing, that the choir is doing and the musicians are doing and the ushers are doing and the deacons and trustees and all that stuff is so significant that without it, that his sheep would be lost. And Jesus said, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me that you think that, a, that some of my sheep would be lost because you didn't do your job? Is that did you not know that I that my sheep know my voice? And I went to John, and I began to look in John, and John was Jesus. Uh, the story of Jesus in John, Jesus made it so clear that my sheep know my voice and won't follow another. They will do and what they're supposed to do. And guess what? When I tell them to stay, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna stay. And he said, nobody. My father gave me these sheep, and nobody is ever gonna pluck them out of my hand. And so I appreciate the stuff you're doing. I appreciate the songs you're singing. I appreciate the messages you're preaching. I appreciate all the stuff you're doing, but don't ever think that you're the one that's keeping anybody. Uh, the Lord is saying, it is me. I'm the one who keeps the sheep, for these are my sheep, not yours. And I had to drop, drop my head. I'm sorry, Lord. He said, you were too arrogant in your thinking. You're too arrogant in thinking that, that you have some, some control or you have some, some impact on, on, on what's going on. He said, listen, it was me. And then I had to remember of uh, the many of us who got, he said, where did you get saved? It wasn't always, in, you weren't always in church. You weren't always at the altar. You wasn't always looking holy and sanctified. He said, I found some of y'all in the bar. I found some of y'all in the pool room. I found some of y'all on the street. Uh, it wasn't everybody that was at Sunday school. Everybody did not come that way, but some people out in the street and I'm so glad that some person, some mother, some father, some young person came and witnessed and had the boldness to step outside the doors and to be with sinners and to sit with those that nobody else would want to be with. Sometimes we get so sanctimonious that all of a sudden now that we say we don't want to be with nobody else. Ew, look at them. They're homeless. They're, they're incarcerated. They ain't right. We got, but for the grace of God, they there go you and I. You got to know for certain that it wasn't your grace and it ain't your mercy. It ain't because you're so good. It's because God's been good to you. You ought to give him praise just for that. I was wrong. I said, Lord, I had the wrong thought in my mind. I had the wrong thought. I thought we was, you know, more significant in the scheme of things. He said, man, I'm doing this for you. You, you praising me because you're getting a benefit. It's, you think I'm getting a benefit out of you praising me. Jesus, I don't need any, I don't have need of anything. I'm on heaven on high now. Where my father has the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't get hungry. I don't get thirsty. I don't have need. You, we're saying, Lord, I'm praising you and I'm worshiping you as if Jesus sitting there just smiling and grinning. He said, man, as you're praising, the praises go up. I, I'm busy letting blessings come down. When you're praising me, I got, I'm taking care of you. When you're praising me, that's why you haven't lost your mind. You thought because you were so smart. You haven't lost your mind because I've been good. That's why you haven't lost your family. That's why your marriage is still together. That's why you still got a job. That's why you still got food on your table. That's why, because I've been good to you, not because you've been good to me. You ain't did nothing for me. Oh, yes, yes. You think you're doing something because you come to church. So what? I've been better to you than that. And you come and you won't even praise me like you ought to praise me. They said, how can that be? Because I've been that good to you that you should fall on your face every time you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. You ought to say, Lord, I shout. I give you praise because I ain't did nothing. I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm just your servant, trying to do the best I can with the little bit I got. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. We got to come humble before the Lord. 
come humble before the Lord. And not just us. We got to come and say, listen here. Your brother and sister, how dare you complain on how they worship me? How you be so arrogant and say, they don't, I don't know why they don't give God praise. Do you know what they're going through? Have you any idea what they have endured? And the fact that they made it out, <laughs> the fact that they came out, you don't know what it took for them to get here. You don't know how, much, how many tears they cried. You don't know what's going on. If we could just learn, uh, I'm back to the beginning, if we just could learn to respect one another. We talk about love, I love you. No, you, if you don't respect me, you don't love me. No, no, you can't disrespect me and talk about that's love. That's not love. But love is like, listen, some people are very, uh, you know, they're very gregarious and, and they jump and shout a lot and, and they run around the church and speak in tongues and all that. And, and they got haters because they say, well, it don't take all that. And then the people that's running around look at the other people and say, they don't do nothing. They just sit there and, 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 and rock back and forth. It, it, it take more than that. And so they hate. So now you hating me and I'm hating you. And then you got the people in the middle that do a little something. And, and, and they talk about both of us. I don't know. He, they too crazy over there and they too quiet over there. And so we sit in the church judging each other. And we sit in the church wondering when everybody going to get saved like me. <laughs> when everybody. And the answer is they ain't never going to be like you. And God is so good. We should celebrate the difference. Some people jump and shout, God bless you. Some people sit and moan. Some people cry. Some people just uh, turn their head. It doesn't matter what you do and how you worship him as long as you worship him. And guess what? All I ask is get out of my way because when I get ready to praise him, I want to do it my way and I'm not letting no devil hell stop me and you shouldn't either. And as long as we can praise him together, I respect how you praise him. I respect how you give him. Well, if we can do that, there comes the love of Jesus Christ. We don't have no division. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're the person I love the most here on earth because God has given you in my family. You can't choose your family. You can't choose your brother and sister. I don't care if I don't like the way you look. I don't care if I don't like the color you are. I don't care if I don't like the way you talk. If you're my brother and my sister, we love each other. God love you. See you for Thanksgiving. Let's give God some praise. We got to stop the nonsense. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we got to stop the nonsense all over the world. How is Christianity the most separated group in the world? Uh, how is that possible? That should be impossible, shouldn't it? We have Christ that prayed for us that we become one. And our answer to him is no. And he said, no, all you got to, what can we do, Jesus? Love somebody. That's it. That's it. You ain't got to change their theology. Just love them. You ain't got to change their thought. They ain't got to think like you. What does the Bible say? We all, watch this, watch this. I'm going to mess with you now. We all see as through a glass darkly. So a lot of us, what does that mean? That means none of y'all know what y'all talking about. <laughs> Basically, everybody say, well, I think this is good for you. The Lord is saying, none of y'all see me in, in my totality. You don't know me. He said, well, my ways are far from your ways as the heaven is from the earth. How can you see that? So how can you be arrogant with what you think you know? Are you understanding that? I know a little bit that I know, but I don't know it all. And guess what? I can learn something from you. <laughs> see, no matter how different you are, how you see it, and if I add your little bit, her little bit, his little bit, I get a little bit more. I'm never going to see him until I see. But guess what? When we all get to heaven, uh, somebody said, oh, what a day of rejoice that's going to be. When we all get to heaven, we're going to see Jesus, and we're going to know him even as we are known. I'm done this morning. I just feel like preaching this thing because it's real. Hallelujah. Come on, give God enough. One more blast praise. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. What is it? Stop while you're ahead or stop while you're behind. Wherever you are, just, just stop. We're going to ask the praise team and, and the choir to um, give us a, a, a closing song, a, one for invitation for after all has been said and done. Now watch this. I didn't get back to the crux of this whole message was Jesus was out doing evangelism work, right? He wasn't in the church pastoring or teaching. He wasn't prophesying, right? He wasn't being an apostle at this time. So of the fivefold gifts, what was he doing? He was evangelizing. He was out talking to those who didn't know Jesus. 
and didn't know salvation and didn't know the kingdom, didn't understand kingdom principles and prospects. And so Jesus said, let me just tell you that. And, and the wonderful thing, he said, that the sinners, right, all was listening. He had their attention. Isn't that wonderful? And he said, this is what I was called to do, to bring them to you. Now, those of y'all who's already saved and sanctified, good for y'all. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep learning. Keep studying. Keep growing. But somebody, he said, I got to go. The shepherd went out to search for the, the sheep. Oh, yes. And he went out with, and was successful. What do you do when he brought the sheep? He brought the sheep back home. This is the part I love. He said, and all heaven rejoice more over that one sheep that he brought home than all the ones that needed no repentance. That doesn't mean he doesn't care for that. But heaven is saying, I'm so grateful when one person comes to the Lord. I'm so happy when that one person comes because he understands that that soul was eternally lost. Hallelujah. But now they are eternally saved. Isn't that wonderful? And now we can rejoice as family because here's another baby being born. Here's another. You know how when your baby's born and, and in your family, y'all send all these pictures around all over Facebook and all that. Look at the, that little wrinkled up baby. Everybody, the whole family is like, oh, he looked like his mom, his daddy, whatever. He looked like a baby to me. But, but, but they send her around because you're so happy, you're delighted. Why? Because there's another member to your family. We ought to be exactly like that. We ought to be happy. When somebody gets saved, when somebody comes to Jesus, when somebody gets baptized, the whole place, we should be shaking the building. For the Bible says the whole heavens rejoice. All the angels, everybody said, thank you, Lord, for another one. Thank you, Lord, that somebody has given up sin. Thank you, Lord, that Satan is being defeated. Thank you, Lord, that they're coming through. Thank you, Lord, that there's power. Thank you, Lord, there's another one to take the place of those that have gone on to glory. Thank you, there's another preacher. There's another pastor. There's another teacher. There's another other evangelists, there's something that person is coming to Christ to do a work uh, that needs to be done. And so this morning, I implore anyone here, personally, anyone on, online, if you don't know the Lord, oh my goodness, if you don't know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing you could ever do. There's nothing greater you can do, not only in your life, in your eternity. There's nothing. I would implore you right now, just give it a chance. Well, how many witnesses do we have this morning? That, that wouldn't do, take nothing for your journey, that you wouldn't take nothing for salvation. Do we have anybody say, it's the best decision I ever made? Uh, can, can, let them see your hands. This, this is the best decision. And if you haven't made that decision yet, I would invite you to come even now. Come on, even with your mask on. Come on, we'll pray for you. We'll lay hands. Come even now. If you're online, listen, just let us, send us a line. Send us a note. Let us know you want Jesus this morning because we will stop everything for you. For God loves you so much, uh, that he said, I'll go just for that one. I'll go for that one sheep and leave these 99 right here. <laughs> y'all got it. Because guess what? Y'all can stay home alone. You've got enough power to stay home alone. You've got enough anointing to take care of yourself. Y'all good? But I got to go and get some, go to the highways and byways and get somebody to be saved. God bless you this morning. Come on, come on, saint. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray together right now. Thank you, Jesus. We're all a part of God's family. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One body, one body, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hallelujah. It is his will. Hallelujah. You hear the words of the song right now? You are to I need you to survive. I need you to survive. Whoever you are, we're talking to you this morning. You are important to us. You are Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. And call I heaven on your behalf. You Let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we come. And that song is the sentiment of our hearts. There are those who, 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 we love your people, Lord. And we're gaining a greater love for them and a greater appreciation for your people everywhere. Each and every day when we see them, our, our tears come to our eyes for those who don't know you. Who are, who are going uh, oblivious of your love, oblivious of your kindness and your caring and that you went on Calvary's cross and died for them. And salvation is right there for the asking. Right there. All they have to do is believe. Trust 
and grab hold of it, Lord. And so we repent for any time that we haven't been vanguards and, and we haven't been ambassadors of the word and letting people know that before it's everlasting too late that they can be saved. And so, Lord, we ask you to open up the avenues, open up the way that we can be what you have us to be and say what you have us to say and go where you have us to go, irrespective of what all the Pharisees and the scribes are saying. We're going to go anyway because the, we want to go to the lost. We want to go uh, through the, to the furthest places on earth, Lord, and lift up up your name that everybody oh god every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are god but even now there's might be somebody in our midst that's saying i i, I wasn't too sure we want the, the assurity of salvation to be placed upon them right now let your anointing fall fresh in this place in this house in the homes that are listening and everyone under the sound of our voice right now let your anointing fall upon them let them feel your shekinah glory right now lord be inside their bones and their body that they will feel the effect of the spirit of god on them right now that they may repent and be baptized, oh God, that they may be saved and eternally so, God, secure in their salvation. We thank you right now for, Lord, for doing this for us and through us, this ministry you've given us. We are grateful for it. We're grateful for our choir. We're grateful for our musicians. We're grateful for all the officers. We're grateful for our ushers. We're grateful for all the people that are here today. But more than anything, Lord, we're grateful that your spirit is here. Hallelujah. That your anointing is upon us. And you have called us for this time, a time such as this, and we take it seriously. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for this. We thank you right now for anyone, Lord. And we're asking anyone right now, if you want to be saved, come on to, and we'll pray for you. Come on and we'll lay hands on you. Come on and to Jesus even now. Thank you, Jesus, even now. God bless you this morning. And may heaven smile upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.